Hello, everybody, and welcome to another installment of uh, our Rift Valley Network webinar series. Today, I'm uh, very happy uh, that we have uh, Ahmed Sosal here. Uh, so Ahmed Sosal Altayeb Mohammed Ali is a PhD student at the Leiden University Center for Linguistics. And uh, today, He's going to be presenting uh, the talk Lateral Obstruents in the Taita Hills, an Aerial Historical Perspective. Ahmed, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Andrew, for the introduction and for the invitation to talk at the RVN webinar. Um, and thanks anyone, uh, everyone else for, for attending. And I'm looking forward to your input for what I'll be presenting today. Uh, it's uh, mainly uh, on the lateral obstruents, uh, which I'll be um, calling lateral, lateral fricatives from now on, because basically they are lateral fricatives, but uh, sorry for this last minute kind of change, but uh, the terms are uh, interchangeable. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, roughly the outline of the presentation. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce the languages and the um, location where they are spoken. And also we see them, um, the lot of fricatives on uh, Bantu and non-Bantu items and also how they change. Then we will uh, have a conclusion and uh, a bit of uh, discussion uh, at the end. And I'm um, looking forward to hear what uh, what do you think? And because also this is a kind of not my 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 field of work, and it's a side project I worked on like earlier uh, last year. And it has been a while, even earlier than last year. But anyway, uh, it has been a while since the last time I have had a look at this, and it is um, yeah, I'm uh, bringing it back to life now. And I'll see uh, what do you think there, uh, because I'm not working on Bantu also. So this is also something to keep in mind and any kind of input will be useful. Uh, the languages uh, I'll be uh, talking about uh, are mainly the, uh, spoken in the title hills and uh, include Davida, which is written sometimes as Davida, Davida, and also sometimes called Taita. And the other language spoken there is Sagala. Um, then we have uh, other uh, like hypothetical languages uh, called uh, Taita Pushitic, which are no longer spoken in the area, but they used to be there. And these are called Old Kenyan Cushitic, including other languages, uh, other Cushitic languages like Yaku, which is an Eastern Cushitic language, Rotobaz, and Dahalo. And this is uh, uh, Martin's uh, term for the uh, title Cushitic languages. Uh, this is the title area in um, Southeast Kenya. And it is uh, basically uh, near the borders of Tanzania, uh, as you can see in the star area here. And it is uh, kind of a mountain range. If we zoom in, uh, we can see that this is the area uh, where the smaller circle is for Sagala and the bigger one is for Davida, but it's not only spoken here, it's also spoken in other mountain further to the south. Uh, and also in, it's dispersed in different kinds of varieties in this area. Uh, for Sagala, I found in uh, different sources, they sometimes called the Sagala Terry, so I don't know if this is really a variety or just uh, another name for Sagala. So uh, we might consider that that a sort of might be uh, Sagala Terry is different from Sagala, but just to be aware that, okay, this is also uh, another term I came across. Uh, Davida is, uh, yeah, is more widespread than Sagala. As you can see, Sagala is only in this mountain and it's part of this mountain as uh, you can see. Uh, for Davida, it's spoken in all around the Taita Hills um, and the Sagala mountain and even further 
to the south in this Kasigao mountain. So it's spoken in the Taita Ridge and in the Kasigao mountain, and also uh, maybe the other varieties in Sagala mountain in between the two mountains. Uh, the dialect, Davida has, it looks like this language is really diverse internally. Uh, there is, uh, according to Philipson, he divides them into northern group, including uh, Weruga dialect. Uh, to that, we might add Mbale, which is which he didn't add to the group, but it's mentioned in in, in others. And since there are uh, the the red circles here, they are approximately in a comparable kind of location, and also. They are the only two we find uh, with uh, most data uh, with letter fricatives. So yeah, uh, it might be, uh, they might be in the same group. Then we have the Southern group uh, include, uh, that include Josa and maybe further to the South there is Kasigao, but uh, I'm not including, uh, there isn't much on Kasigao and I'm not including it in the discussion today. Uh, then the Northwestern group, it's called uh, Mgange. Uh, it has a lot of fricative, but I only found one item with that in Philipso. So also that one is, uh, is not part of the data I'm presenting. Then the East dialect is called Mbolo, uh, Mbololo. And this is isolated one and it has not reported to have a lot of fricative. So this is an overview of the area and the languages spoken in the area. Uh, then there is, uh, this, these are the sources of the data and some of the abbreviations you might see. Uh, yeah, there are many, uh, sorry for that, but uh, mainly uh, we'll be talking about the Davida and the different varieties and they abbreviated like this, Dav, with a J for Josa, K for Kazigao, but Kazigao might not come uh, up uh, again. And then there is Mbale, and Davida uh, Weruga, so it's a dub, a W. Uh, then we have Sagala and Sagala Terry. Sagala Terry is a T. Uh, this is how it's abbreviated in the, in the data. Uh, for the rest, it's just for comparison. I'm uh, referring to the other Kushitic and Bantu languages spoken in the area for comparative reason to see the parallels and how different uh, uh, the, diff uh, the, the correspondences are. Uh, I also did some adaptation for the transcription. Maybe uh, this might sound not important, but uh, since uh, some people might interpret things differently, I thought it would be good to present them here uh, for the sake of argument. Um, and I hope, uh, I don't know if everybody agrees, but for example, for the TLY, uh, the data from Rai, I think uh, it's uh, considered as uh, lateral affricate, voice lateral affricate uh, in mouse. And uh, he can tell us uh, later, uh, like about uh, the choice. And uh, he preferred this over the uh, voiceless lateral affricate, uh, fricative which is found in uh, Eret and Nurse. And I'm using that because the data also comes from Eret and Nurse and yeah. But the other possibility is also the holds like it might have been larger uh, Africa. Okay, now let's look at the data. Um, we will start with the hypothetical language, which or languages, which are called the Taita Akushitic. And these are proposed by Eric Anders in 1981 in the publication as one of the lost um, uh, Kushitic uh, languages, South Kushitic languages is spoken in, uh, in the Taita area. And it's also proposed that they were there before uh, David and Sagala people moving. So they came and uh, later maybe they, I don't know uh, where they vanished or in which group they got assimilated now. Uh, anyway, since Taita Kushetic has lateral fricatives, we have to assume maybe the sources of the lateral fricatives in Davida and Sagala is uh, Taita Kushetic or um, South Kushetic. 
but when we look at the data cited in uh, Eric Anders, uh, which has been updated later in Eric 2011, uh, it seems like the reflexes uh, or the loans from those uh, for presumed uh, tighter Cushitic languages, they have uh, been changed into uh, non uh, lateral fricative uh, correspondences. So we have Sha and uh, Davida and Sagala for the word for uh, to tear. It is a loan from uh, Taita Cushitic. Originally, it was South Cushitic. But it has, um, yeah, it, it didn't continue as a lateral fricative in the target languages. And the same for the lateral fricative, uh, but this is assumed to be a different uh, title Cushitic language. And that's why also they propose that, okay, this title Cushitic language, it was a group of two languages, uh, A and B. So the first one is A and the second one is B, the lateral fricative from the ancestor of the title Cushitic, um, from the ancestor of title Cushitic, which is South Cushitic, uh, continued in title Cushitic A as lateral fricative, but when it's borrowed into Davida and Sagala, it has changed into Sha. And from Taita Kushitic B, it has already been changed into a plain uh, uh, lateral approximant La. And when it's borrowed into Sagala, it has uh, been changed into Ra further. And yeah, so this is why the, different, uh, the difference in the reflexes we see in Taita Kushitic. But uh, I'm going to refer to Taita Kushitic in, in, in general, uh, just for the simplicity and because we don't want to get into too much details of the Taita Kushitic. And also it is disputable if uh, they really hold as two separate languages in general. So uh, the affricate one has continued as Ta in Taita Kushitic, which has been borrowed as it is into uh, Davida. And then, uh, yeah, the other one uh, also has been, uh, this is a proto rift PR, uh, has continued as uh, voice into Taito Kushitic and later has been continued as um, ambular um, da, uh, which has continued into the Vida as it is. Uh, yeah, the Africa again continue also as Ra, which has continued as Ra in uh, Sagala for, for these words. But it's still, uh, that doesn't mean all the loans uh, has been completely um, changed. Uh, there are few which have survived from Taito Kushitic, um, maybe uh, yeah, Taito Kushitic A, the voice plus uh, lateral fricatives. Uh, some of them, they have uh, survived in Sagala and uh, other um, mixed language, uh, Ma'ambugu. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, let's see the ones which have survived in, in Sagala. These are the only words I, I think so far uh, I have found and they are already mentioned in Maus uh, in, in his public, uh, in an upcoming publication and also in his two, uh, 2003 publication. Uh, and they have got parallels, as you can see in uh, in the other languages. Uh, I don't know, Mbugu is not really a, a clear cut kind of uh, Cushitic language, so we can consider it um, something between Cushitic and Bantu. Then we have the proto uh, Cushitic uh, parallel, uh, which has been reconstructed by um, Eret. Uh, yeah, this is the word for uh, to start. It is start, it has uh, initial uh, lateral fricative, uh, which has come into um, Sagala via Mbugu. And this is also the general assumption, like all of these words, which are the only ones which, uh, which are um, maybe uh, uh, found or collected so far. They are coming via uh, Mbugu. They are not direct from the um, putative Taita Kushitic language. Um, yeah, and we have uh, some kind of uh, vowel chains 
uh, postulated also by Eric and Nurse. Uh, but if you look at, when I look at uh, Kisling and Maus, it, uh, they have reconstructed a different form uh, with, the, with the glide, which is closer than the protocell scoshitic, uh, which has been reconstructed by Eric. Uh, then for the second variant, also um, we have um, Ra, uh, which has become Ga, or the other way around in uh, in the West Fifth and East Fifth languages. If uh, if this one is really accurate kind of transcription, Kuatse is no longer spoken, and uh, quality of the data is also something uh, is questionable. Then we have the third word, uh, which has been reconstructed as uh, with the final labialized velar uh, for South Cushitic. But also this is, um, yeah, it, it's really difficult to know what has happened uh, because when you look at the, um, yeah, the, the chi is not there and even the, the labialization is not there. so. Um, yeah, this could be uh, the, the source, but uh, it's really a questionable kind of. Uh, for white ants, it's uh, kind of uh, straightforward. It's just uh, maybe the introduction or the loss of the um, of the glottal hand in Sagano. So this uh, these are the only larger fricatives survived in uh, Sagana from the title Cushitic languages via Google. And then the rest are mainly in the Vida uh, or only in the Vida for, for the rest of the data uh, found. And they are also in two of the varieties, as I mentioned earlier, in the Vida Mbale and the Vida Weruga. Uh, for example, we have the, the word for milk. Uh, and this is probably coming from by uh, Swahili, Maziwa, uh, and the za has been, uh, yeah, has become a, a lateral frigative, voice lateral frigative in David and Bale. In David and we have a lot of but it is a palatalized one. Uh, it's not a, yeah. Uh, in David and Bale, it's just a lot of but it's, there is a palatalization and a secondary palatalization in David and When we look at the uh, parallels in the in David Josa or other David dialects, is usually uh, they correspond to Pra, as we can see here, Mariva. Uh, Sagala has the uh, za. It's also different reflex, but it's still the uh, frigates. Uh, Kikuyu has also ra. Uh, for common Bantu, uh, it has been reconstructed as Diba. When we look at Kushitic, we have uh, comparable uh, parallels. As you can see, Iliwa, Iliba, Liba. Uh, yeah, Ziwa here in Dahala probably is also from. Swahili, and it has been reconstructed to proto south -Kushitic. So we have Diba and Iliba, and this is also a kind of uh, disputable whether it is a Kushitic word or, um, or Bantu. The second word is banana. We'll come to this milk again in, in the next slide. Uh, for, for the, the word for banana also is uh, found in Cushitic, and also it is argued that it's probably um, alone from Cushitic, but it's still, it has got a larger fricative. So although the Cushitic parallel doesn't have for both of the words, but it's still we find in Davida, uh, in the two varieties, Waruga, uh, in, in Waruga only here, uh, we have the lateral fricative, uh, not in Josa and not in Sagala. And here Sagala also has, instead of Za, they have Ra. And uh, probably this is also because of the following environment, where usually they don't have, uh, yeah, uh, fricative before U. 
Yeah, back to the word for milk again. Uh, it was interesting to see different sources transcribing it differently. And also maybe this is due to the uh, dialectal variation. Uh, yeah, uh, we have one with the bilabial fricative. We have one with the uh, alveolar fricative, uh, the, the palatal fricative, and we have also the, yeah, the the normal fricatives, uh, uh, lateral fricatives we, we are expecting in um, Bale and Weruga. In Josa, we have Ra, and in Davida, we have Za. So different sources are transcribing it differently, and this is probably attributed to the variation in the in the in the dialects, but it is the same word and it includes all the possible probability reflexes for, uh, yeah, with the, the uh, possible fricative and, uh, yeah, uh, reflexes. So the origin of this word is really uh, not clear, but usually they argue that it is a Cushitic loan into Bantu, which is um, um, highly possible. Although, uh, okay, I I have a different opinion, but uh, that's a discussion for another day. Okay, uh, so those are the ones which are found on non-Bantu, uh, yeah, uh, from a non-Bantu kind of origin. Although some of them, as you can see, also reconstructed for Bantu, like uh, we have the common Bantu Diba. Uh, which is assumed to be uh, to be the uh, source for 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 those words, but also Bantu has another word which is more uh, uh, kind of established uh, word for milk. I mean, established um, uh, word for milk in in Bantu, which is found also in the other Bantu branches beyond Eastern Bantu. So that's why uh, the Cushitic source is really uh, highly possible. Now, uh, let's look at more of the Vida, uh, but this is on Bantu uh, lexemes. These uh, are assumed to be uh, all originated from Bantu, uh, but the first two or three uh, might be also, um, yeah, kind of debatable because they are reconstructed for Bushiti. Uh, These two items, the word for bamboo uh, and pumpkin, they are found in both languages and they're comparable. Uh, reconstructed as uh, dangi uh, for proto-bantu in the BLR. Uh, but also uh, there is a, a form called uh, like for box quiver reconstructed for Porto uh, Northwest uh, Rift um, in Kisling and Mouse. And for Proto uh, Rift, there is a plan, plan uh, which is also, yeah, uh, reconstructed. So uh, if they go back to Proto Bantu, and Pro, it, it is really, uh, um, yeah, difficult to know, but uh, in the next slide, I will show you that, okay, it might be probably more of a Bantu region. Uh, we have uh, also the word for pumpkin, which is uh, found in Cushitic, but also reconstructed for Proto-Bantu. I see them one by one. Okay, for Bantu, yeah, the corresponding Cushitic word, uh, it means quiver, of course, if, uh, if we look at the... Um, if we look at the, the semantic, you might be wondering, but still, it is a, it is a possible semantic shift. It's not uh, impossible to use the word for bamboo, uh, which means as as uh, the word for quiver, because it is used, uh, yeah, uh, for for the errors. Uh, I come across this when I was collecting uh, uh, the um, tree vocabulary last time. Uh, last year in, in Tanzania when they said, yeah, we used um, the bamboo stem 
of the, the bamboo to uh, store the quiver. So maybe there is a sort of um, a relationship between the two there. Uh, then there is also a shift to, to arrow, uh, arrow in, um, in Quadza. Uh, we have Davida, lateral fricative, voice lateral fricative corresponding to the halora. And this is uh, the halo probably is uh, long because of also the prefix. Um, on the other hand, Quadza and uh, the West Coast languages, they have an ejective dental lateral affricate. Okay. And uh, interestingly, uh, Eric proposed the um, Proto West Fifth clan uh, arrow as a source for the Tatagoshitic word uh, Tana, Bo. And that means it is alone in, in uh, Sagala and Davida, Tana. And uh, the Proto or the common Bantu, Dangi bamboo, it has been reconstructed in uh, BLR. Yeah, Babast in. Uh, uh, at all. And so far, the evidence supports the Bantu origin of this word. However, both like, uh, yeah, Lassin and Guthri, they have noted that these cognates are found exclusively in the Eastern uh, Bantu region, which means, okay, there is a probability of an Eastern Bantu innovation or a Cushitic source for, for this word. The interesting uh, thing about this one is the fact that, okay, if it is a uh, Bantu loan into Kushitic, why does it have a lateral uh, affricate? So it is because lateral affricate or lateral fricatives in general are assumed to be inherited, in, found in inherited Kushitic words because they are reconstructed for proto afro -Asiatic, And that's also what make the uh, what makes us think that, okay, maybe the lateral fricatives we see in Bantu also, they are, since they are, they doesn't go back to proto-Bantu, they are coming from, uh, from Kushitic, which are uh, also coming from up higher uh, in the proto afro family. But uh, now we have a loan from uh, Bantu, uh, from Bantu into Kushitic, and the da has been changed into a, a lateral uh, affricate, um, which is uh, really something to, to, to think about. Um, I think the source here is Proto-Bantu, uh, since they are really restricted uh, in, in the geographic, in that, yeah, they, of course, they are only found in, in, that, in the Eastern African, it's innovation, but it's still, uh, in Kushitic, I don't, I don't know if there are any other sources beyond the um, yeah, uh, waste drift for this word. Then we have these loans in um, to Kushitic. Uh, also, uh, this is the pumpkin. Uh, this one is. Ilya alone uh, into Kushitic, the word for pumpkin has been reconstructed as a proto Bantu uh, Dengi in also BLR and in, in Guthri. Uh, yeah, an additional Bantu series was also reconstructed to uh, Tanga based on cognates such as the Bonde word uh, Tanga and the Rangi I Tanga uh, in Kisling and Mouse. And uh, these forms are labeled as multi-valent um, related cognates in Guthri, and yet each one may refer to different species of pumpkin similar to proto West Rift for a uh, form like uh, we have Tanga and Tangia, it's a pumpkin species or uh, watermelon. Uh, more parallels are also found in other languages in the in East Africa, namely Sandawi. They have Tanga, Melon, and those loans in uh, West Rift and Sandawi are recent Bantu loans, and they go back to Proto Bantu Tanga, while David and Sagala cognates are uh, from uh, Proto Bantu Dengue, and the latter fricative uh, of Davida, Weroga. They correspond to Proto-Bantu-Da, 
and uh, yeah, the remaining Bantu cognates uh, they correspond to to Torah, as we can see for David and Joseph, for example. Uh, yeah, there is a variation in the transcription of uh, Nga and Na, uh, sometimes preceding the velar uh, in Bantu. So that's something also to, to put in mind. Um, for Davida with Ruga uh, and David and Bale, this is where most of the data comes from. There are really many, many uh, words with uh, lateral fricatives. As we can see here, uh, we have about eight. And they are, yeah, from different kind of semantic um, um, yeah, categories, but they have no parallel uh, anyway in Cushitic. That's uh, this means they are really inherited uh, Bantu words, as we can see here for the word for ten, twenty. Maybe it's uh, still derived from ten. The word for front. Davida Weruga. Then when we look at uh, usually Josa, they have Tara. Davida Weruga, they have the latter frigative, and usually it's uh, it's always palatalized, as uh, Slavikova has described it. And yeah, uh, when you look at Sagala, the corresponding is uh, Ra. But again, you can see also there is La here for Davida Josa. These are all the reflexes of the protopantu da. Uh, yeah, so when we look at protobantu, it's da, it either continues as ra, la, or uh, la. Again, for the word for bring, we have uh, a lateral fricative, we have a trill, we have um, lateral approximant corresponding to da, and the same pattern goes. Uh, when we look at the environment where they occur, it, uh, it seems to be really diverse, but it's still uh, there is an environment where the direct uh, reflexes, the, the, uh, they are assumed before the closed vowels. This is the normal environment where they are expected. Otherwise, uh, this is a sort of uh, indirect, these are indirect reflexes as yeah, we will see. Yeah, in the second uh, part also, we have uh, yeah the, the, the same kind of pattern, but it's Sagala, sometimes they have za, as we can see the word for darkness, kiza. Uh, common band to, uh, yeah, da. This is for Davida Verruga, and here are more examples. Interestingly, here it is gel, even not expected da for proto bantu. More examples. Yeah. And this is David Dambale, by the way, because the, the, in Josa it is Ra, in David Dambale we have the lateral frigative. They even uh, went into the yeah these uh, kind of functional words where I was surprised to see them in, in such kind of words. Okay, so the lateral fricatives in the Vida, they get, they correspond to Ra in other Davida dialects. In Davida with Ruga, they are um, yeah palatalized as I said. In the other Bantu languages, they also correspond to Ra or La. In Mbale, they are not palatalized, but it's still voice. In, Davi, in other David dialects, they correspond to Za or Ra, uh, Davi, uh, Bantu languages, I mean. Uh, the Za is uh, found in Sagala mainly, but also in other, in, in other dialects. For the video with Ruga, for more detailed rule, it's um, yeah, from uh, Slavikova. It 
they all come from a, a common Bantu da, which uh, either continue as la or sometimes is lost before a. Uh, this is called the direct kind of reflex. This is the expected reflex of the Bantu da, although yeah, there are also debates on whether it is la or ra, but also la can become ra, by the way. Uh, yeah, uh, in the same environment as the latter fricative. Then we have uh, this uh, alveopalatal um, fricative, which is found before E, the closed vowel E. And yeah, this is also conditioned by the second, the vowel of the second, uh, the second vowel of the stem. And these are called skewed reflexes because yeah, they are not one-to-one uh, -one kind of um, corresponding to the old um, sound. And this is uh, Slavic corpus terms. Uh, yeah, because it's not the expected reflex, so it's called skewed. For the for this uh, lateral, uh, the, the alveo palatal is not considered here because yeah, it's uh, least common as um, she mentioned. So yeah, uh, and also we haven't seen in any of the above examples any instance of uh, of this reflex. Okay, um, yeah, now uh, we come to the conclusions. I hope you're able to follow what I was saying and it was not too fast. Yeah. Um, I hope this is visible to everyone. Uh, these are all the reflexes. Okay, uh, let's call Davida and Sagala as title Bantu, and then we have a title Kushitic. Uh, in title Bantu, the latter fricatives which are found are the voice and the voiceless, and the voiceless is only found on loan words from Kushitic, which are only limited to few in Sagala. And the voice one is uh, really common in the, yeah, in Davida, in the two dialects, Davida Waruga and Davida Mbale. Uh, yeah, and uh, the voiceless one is found in Sagala. They correspond to, um, yeah, different uh, ones, the, the different reflexes in uh, Kushitic and in Bantu. Usually the uh, non fricative uh, variants, they are found in, um, in the Bantu, and uh, yeah, the one, uh, the, the affricate is found in, in Kushiti. And yeah, also, most of the data, as you have seen, you don't see corresponding uh, lateral fricative in uh, both, both uh, like Davida and Sagala at the same time. It's either uh, one of, or the two, even for the loans, which has um, retained the old Cushitic voiceless latter frigatic. And Taito Cushitic, as, uh, yeah, as I said, they have only retained one of the old Cushitic. Uh, there are only two. Uh, they retained one of them, which is the law. But also there might be a question of uh, why labialized, why the David Oroga has uh, labialized um, variant. And I think if we look at the environment, the most common environment where it's attested is before the closed front vowel E. And that might have a sort of influence on the pronunciation of the, yeah, because also it, this return can change sound it, as a feature of, of both the common Bantuda and also the environment where it's uh, commonly found before, um, before E. And maybe that's what uh, motivated for the for the palatalization. For David Mbale, uh, yeah, usually it's found before U, so maybe that's also why it is not really um, yeah, it, it's not palatalized. This is just my hypothesis, but I'm not sure how uh, true is that. Um, and also for David Mbale, it is uh, really. Uh, yeah, sometimes you have um, 
There, there, there are many reflexes also, as I have mentioned, but the environment is restricted as we will see here. Okay, so since we don't have many on, um, in, 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 in at least in Davida, we don't have many or any, uh, lots of fricatives on Cushitic loans on loan or loans from other languages, then we have to assume there is a sort of internal development for, for the latter fricatives. And the Bantu's parentization is uh, uh, defined as a process which has occurred in East Africa after contact with early uh, South, uh, Southern Cushitic people. This is according to Nurse. And that's really um, coincides with uh, what uh, Eric. And, and nurse has nurse has mentioned about the Cushitic people who were there in the Taita Hills before the arrival of the of uh, Sagala and Bantu and um, Davida people into the area. So the broad Bantu pronunciation rule could be like common Bantu da become voice aspirant uh, before uh, the closed vowels, and these vowels are usually transcribed as. Uh, the Bantu people know this kind of super close uh, vowels, which are uh, sometimes they have a sidea and the need, but I'm um, just using the simple ones which are found in BLR now. So yeah, be aware of these, uh, these vowels are called super close vowels in Slavikova and even in uh, Nurse and Hinebush. Uh, one of the oldest Bantu pronunciation rules, according to the chronology, uh, also they are proposed in Nurse and Hunabush is the da becoming za before e in Sagala and uh, da becoming a lateral fricative in Davida. I added Terry and Mbale because this is where we find the za usually is found in the Sagala Terry. This is um, yeah I found in uh, Takaram Brian publication. Uh, yeah. And this is also because um, we have this in David and Bale, and uh, yeah, I, I'm assuming that okay, it's not the whole David as we have seen already in the data. Uh, then we can posit as, uh, we can compare this to Slavikova's rule where the da become a larger fricative before e and u, and you can see the environment is usually is uh, always the same, and that's why I'm assuming that okay. It's the uh, same kind of process of sprintization before closed vowels, which has happened in, uh, in Davida Viruga. But it's not necessarily like, um, as also uh, Nursan Hinobush uh, mentioned, is probably partially uh, independent from the Bantu sprintization. And if it's, it, it's even maybe older than the yeah, their proto sabaki uh, group. This is also uh, what they have mentioned about the sprintization in these languages. So we can propose this rule to accommodate for all the rules we have uh, seen above, and also the different rules which has been proposed uh, in the previous publications. And this is just a hypothetical. Um, attempt for me to put everything together. And uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, if this makes sense for everyone, but anyway, we have common Bantu da, which has either continued as la or a zero. And this rule is already mentioned in Slavikova uh, in this environment. So it's either loss or it continue as la. And I'm proposing this la as a sort of intermediate before getting into a lateral fricative because it is more plausible uh, phonetic uh, change from um, lateral into lateral fricative than directly from the uh, da into a lateral fricative. So probably uh, the la was a sort of intermediate, although the ra also is plausible. And that's why also we either go for the la as intermediate or go for a variant of ra, which is more lateral like. And uh, as all of, it, all of you probably know that, okay, these two sounds in uh, Bantu, they are really 
Uh, it's difficult to know which was the, the old sound, uh, la and ra. But anyway, uh, the la is more um, plausible kind of intermediate if you want to go into a lot of brigadier. Then in Davida, in general, uh, this la continue as it is before a, uh, but in South um, and East Davida dialects, this is Josa uh, and maybe uh, Bololo, dialects we can say there we have uh, ra as we have seen in the data also they correspond to ra but in the north dialect and the north dialect here uh Weruga and mbale they have continued as uh, lots of frigatives in Weruga before e u both the close vowels but in david and Bale, it is it was mainly probably before the front closed vowel. But now we don't see this really consistent, uh, this environment as it is as, as consistent as uh, it is here. But probably this is how it is studied in terms of regularity. But maybe uh, later it has been extended to beyond this, this environment. For discussion and further research, like, okay, maybe uh, we need to go back um, and this, see these lexical items and collect them again and see if they're still using a um, lot of fricative. That would be interesting to see if there are still a uh, lot of fricatives or they have been uh, changed uh, into other sounds. And also uh, maybe a sociolinguistic kind of research to see if there are really why they are only just in uh, in these two dialects, although there are many other varieties and they're restricted to these uh, dialects. Maybe it's uh, they also use as emblematic um, sounds in, uh, in the Northern dialects as uh, mouse also are proposed for the uh, latter fricatives in Inambugu. He said it is a sound that other people point out as an example of why Bantu, uh, why Inambugo is so difficult? Yeah, so maybe that's also one of the motivations, but also we need to do research before we, yeah, we know what happened or why they are, uh, they use this sound. And also, um, maybe we need to look into more Pushetic lexicon with latter, fricative in Taita, Bantu, and uh, yeah, to see if this is just because of some. Pushitic speakers shifting into Sagala and Davida, those uh, putative uh, Taita Pushitic people, maybe uh, they brought a lot of fricatives into, uh, into these Bantu languages. So also we don't know that yet, but it would be interesting to, to see how that happened. And yeah, um, also the, for the one case we found which looks like really Bantu um, word, which has come into, uh, which has been borrowed into Cushitic, but it has become, uh, it has uh, been transferred with the African, large African, because we, uh, it would be interesting to, to see, maybe there is a sort of um, parallel or comparable development of Da, Bantu Da, and Cushitic D1, which is proposed as, uh, which is equivalent probably in some lexemes to the latter fricatives in West Rift. So we have East Cushitic with D1, according to Zasa, they correspond to latter fricatives in West Rift. And now we have a D in Proto Bantu, which correspond to latter fricatives in, uh, in the Bantu languages in the title. So is this a coincidence or uh, maybe it's, there is uh, something uh, we can learn um, from what, what happened there. And we can learn a lot about the movement of the people and when these people have vanished and all of that, uh, yeah, or assimilated into the other group. Yeah, I think that is all. These are my references. They are very small, but yeah, thank you. Brilliant, and thank you, Ahmed, uh, for today's talk.
Um, I have to say at the beginning, you kind of prefaced it by saying, ah, oh, this is something, you know, I was poking at and I, and I was doing it sort of for fun. And I wasn't expecting kind of this real level of detail and uh, rigor. It was, re it was really excellent. So you short sold yourself at the beginning but kind of to a wonderful effect because it was really enjoyable and I appreciate sort of how deep you went into it. It was a real deep cut and I, uh, and I really enjoyed it. Um, you, uh, on your slide 18, you tempted face or maybe you just tempted me by laying out, first of all, it was really neat to see this, uh, this uh, striking sort of similarity between the Bantu term for milk and the Cushitic term for milk. I'd never noticed that before, but um, it's really striking when you lay it out in the way that you did. Now, you sort of um, looked at this first bullet point, no, the second bullet point, South Cushitic loan into Bantu, but I and but you kind of followed that up with, well, I'm not really sure if that's the case, and but that's another story. I'm if if it's not going to take a million years, like you know, an hour to sort of describe it. If this isn't a whole other presentation, I would be interested in hearing really quickly what you think about this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, there is a whole kind of. I think also Christian has uh, written on on this, and yeah, as you can see, there are many people talk about this. I was just really thinking of a, a whole different uh, um, uh, parallel because in Arabic there is liba, which is the first milk. It means the first milk. And I feel okay if if there is such a word, it might be also like a kind of candidate uh, because the discussion has been around these uh, words only. And also some pe people went for halib, but that liba is, is uh, closer to and com more comparable to this one. So I was like, okay, I had a whole kind of uh, section discussing that, okay, liba could be the source of this word, uh, but the difficulty there is how did it end it up? In, in Kushiti and also in uh, in these Bantu languages. Because uh, in Swahili, we have Maziwa, and it is, uh, yeah, if we consider Swahili as a source, but okay, uh, that's not how, how the like uh, loans transferred from Arabic into, into Swahili. So that one is really tricky. Uh, and I cannot like really give a definitive kind of uh, conclusive, um, uh, answer to, to your question now about this, mm -hmm. but still it's just contribution to the debate uh, because already people have been talking about it. Yeah. Milk, uh, milk is an interesting one. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a lot of reasons. Um, I see that um, Nina has her hand up and I don't know if it's Nina or if it's Martin because I see two faces in this square. So do, do go ahead. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I don't know if Martin also has questions. Of course I do, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, well, Ahmed, I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you so much for presenting and for giving this overview. Um, I have some remarks and questions also concerning lateral options in Southern Bantu language that I thought might be interesting to you. Um, I think one of the things that you said was that different sources describe words differently. I've seen this a lot too, in, even in similar in, same in the same language with different sources. And one of the conclusions that I had for that is that because the Southern Bantu lateral obstruents are rare, that different um, writer, that different authors sometimes don't know how to handle them or how to transcribe them. And then also not everyone takes typical Bantu phonology into account with CV structure. So there's a lot of variation going on there. And we had to do a lot of reinterpreting based on, um, of course, based on logical assumptions and stuff. But that's something we've encountered too. So I wasn't surprised to hear that for you. And then um, one of the other things that you were saying is that I think you had reflexes for the word for I. Um, and I have them in Nguni languages too. So if you would like to see those reflexes, I could share that with you. Yeah. Um, and then one of the other things you were talking about, how it would, would have developed from a common bond to D. 
we've seen, I will type it in the chat, it looks like the lateral upturns in southern run to correspond to the ch and the j in protobuntu. But there's also been, um, I know that there's, I'm sure that there are people in the Zoom that know more about this, but I think that there are maybe proposals that the protobuntu ch and j would actually be siblings, so an s and an z. And that could have been an in-between stage because you see that in a lot of reflexes in Bantu languages nowadays. Mm. And also, I think if you would be interested, I can send you these sources, but I think that I know of a Chinese language and then also of something in something Indo-European um, where they did a shift from sibilance to lateral obstruence. So maybe these sibilance might be kind of in-between stage um, as a transition to lateral obstruence. Um, so I wanted to mention that. Um, oh, and then also in the source of some of these lateral obstruence in Guinea languages seems to be other in Bantu languages um, that they have been in contact with for a lot. Because I know, for example, uh, one of the smaller languages has been a lot in contact with Sutu languages. And then it's mentioned specifically that it only occurs in lone phonemes. So it, we also have a lot of Bantu Bantu contact, it seems. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think one of the final things I was wondering about, if there are any restrictions on where they occur in words. Um, but I think you partially answered that. And I might have missed that because I lost my internet connection for a bit. Yeah. But I think that was all. Yeah. OK, let me start with the last question. Uh, yeah, the environment is um, is restricted somehow, not, not completely, because, um, yeah, uh, for David and Bale, usually they are followed with, uh, with E, as you can see for the uh, word number nine, and also for 10 and for 11, yeah, except for 12, but uh, that one is really complex and it involves uh, more kind of uh, intermediate, uh, like, uh, yeah, uh, development. Uh, for David Averroga, it's uh, the close vowels, both of them, E and U, usually these are the followings. But uh, in terms of, the, yeah, it's usually initial or, uh, yeah, medial, of course, because it has to be followed by one of these. And these are the two environments where it's, uh, they, they are tested for these two dialects. Then for the loans, of course, they just occur where they are. And that uh, condition maybe goes back to the proto-language. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then yeah. this might not be something that you have, but it seems to be one of our things because a lot of just change to uh, voice lateral fricatives. Um, mm -hmm. But that's also, so we also see an effect of noun class of noun class nine and 10, where you see it occur a lot noun initially. Um, but that might not, but that's a, it seems to be a regular sound sound change. Um, and that mm -hmm. doesn't seem to be the case here. So that might not be relevant for you. Yeah, yeah, I found it really interesting how, um... How different the correspondences you found there in South and uh, yeah. yeah, Bantu and here in Eastern. Yeah, th that's why also maybe it's, um, yeah, maybe there is a sort of relationship, especially when you look, as, as you mentioned, for the word for I. Yeah, yeah. I'll share those with you and you can have a look at that uh, for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, also, sorry, <laughs> I just remember one final thing is that I think in our cases, the voicing typically matched. So if it came from a voiced sound in, Protobuntu, it would match to a voice lateral obstruent. And I think one in one of the examples, you didn't have that. Um, I think in one of the words for bamboo, I, the Davi, then Davida had a, a voice one and there was a voiceless. But there's a possible Sandawe source for that that is voiced, so. <laughs> ah, wonderful. OK, great. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was just some of the, I was just wondering about that because that seemed to be a very regular thing in the um, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but if that that's great to know that there's a soul for that. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much. This is uh, really. I think there is a lot of potential to 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 see uh, how far this can go if we try to compare the. Yeah. yeah you should get around to that. Yeah. Yeah, it's more likely to be like a kind of parallel, independent kind of development uh, based on what we see. But okay, what what happened here? The word for I, and this is the only one which doesn't go back to to that. Uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's something to look into. I agree, and I think yeah, definitely.
Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we'll be in touch. It was so interesting to see. Um, and thank you so much for the research. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to, to see your final. Uh, yeah, final. Sure. yeah. I, I was going to sort of raise that and say, well, what do we see in uh, in sort of the more southern Bentu? What, what, did, what are the correspondences? Um, Nina, I see you've been very busy since I've left uh, live. So yeah, thanks for all of that. That was brilliant. Um, I see Bonnie has her hand up. So so do uh, uh, do go ahead, Bonnie. Yeah, sorry, Martin. I'll 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 let you go after me. Uh, my first comment here. I'm going to put a, a paper in the chat. Uh, is this whole? I'm well. First of all, congr fantastic talk. Congratulations. Thank you for all that research. Um, this case here that in this Opengen article, we've got non etymological pharyngeals in Kurdish words, right? So they have borrow, they have pharyngeals in Arabic loan words, but pharyngealization is then spread to native vocabulary. Uh, Kurdish, I believe, is an Indo Iranian language. But also famously, you see the same thing internal development of retroflexes in Indo Aryan languages that are in contact with Dravidian. So like why the only Indo-European languages with retroflexes, just about, there are some Swedish dialects, I guess, but are the ones in contact with languages with retroflexes. It was often assumed, oh, they just borrowed them, but then they're actually good uh, Proto-Indo-European roots and it's an internal development. But you still, you see these cases where you get an internal development, yet it's only in the language that also borrowed the sound. And so I find this very interesting and there's other cases like this around the world and, and well, uh, Kligui is a click language that has lateral obstruents in Southern Africa. Now, I, I don't know that it that influenced Southern Bantu at all, pro probably not, but you know it's just curious that the, the two places in, in Bantu land where you get the, you know, where you get lateral obstruents are <laughs> in contact with these languages yet seeing them in of course good proto-bantu words you know so how how do these sound changes come about and one idea is just if you have a sound in loan word it has a pretty low functional load if you don't have a lot of words with it and one way to kind of maintain that sound is create uh you know more words with that sound it's just i don't know there's it, it's kind of a mystery how these things happen, but it's yeah. something to keep in mind as sort of a bigger picture yeah. of what's going on yeah. here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally agree. It is, uh, it's really amazing. And that's also why we, in the first place, okay, we studied this because like, okay, how does such a rare sound occur in, in, in those languages. And your, your immediate instinct would be that, okay, you know, Cushitic languages in the area, and even uh, Nairotic languages, they have lateral obstruents. So, okay, probably they just come from there. And that's the initial hypothesis. And like, when we look closer, oh, this is not what the data is telling us. Mm -hmm. Only few are really coming from those languages, and they're really different from the ones we see here. And uh, you are right also about the uh, Southern Bantu ones, but yeah, I think there is a lot of history of contact and uh, language shifts and uh, a sort of complex internal development because also we need to know like really what, what's the mechanism really, why it is a uh, voice then, why is, is not a voiceless uh, lateral obstruent uh, coming out. Right, so if, if, if I can continue with my comments, I'll have yeah. some comments about certain of the uh, sound sets. So for instance, with your bamboo set, uh, the word for arrow in Sandawa is voiced uh, Dlani with the voiced affricate. So, okay, so that compares, but then in, in Hadza, the word for quiver is Angase with the voiceless affricate. And, th and that has that final say morphine that is more similar to your dahalo, kirangati. So it's possible that you had two different words, I'm wondering, a quiver word and an arrow word that actually just were very similar and maybe were not related. Mm. I, I guess my one, my first comment is it's very striking how many of these words are also in Hadza and Sandawe. Like, why would they have borrowed the same words that uh, the Taita Bantu people borrowed? <laughs> That's one question. And then when you look at the way the words sound in Hadza and Sandawi, you also have to explain their forms as well. 
So uh, that, that's a little hard. So for instance, a Hadza word for melon is tangi with an aspirated T and Hadza contrasts aspirated and unaspirated. <laughs> mm -hmm. So why would they borrow a Bantu word with a D and make it an aspirated T? Or why would they have borrowed the Sandawi? Well, Sandawi, we think, borrowed the Tonga word, but right, why would they have borrowed an unaspirated word and made it aspirated? Mm. Yet with the with the prenasalized consonant there, it it looks more Bantu than it looks Hadza. So yeah. I don't know how to explain it, but I want to point out that um, Sandawe also has a word for calabash that's um, klengere, that better matches your renge. So yeah. again, we might have a pumpkin word and a calabash word, and they just have some similarity, but don't conflate them into a single etymology. Hmm. Or there's multiple strands of borrowing going on. So because you have that renge in Davida hmm. with the 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 you know the a the the front vowels there. So those were two those two. First of all, um Sandawe has tlarang for dust, hmm. and that seems to be related to the cloud or mist word. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, it's an ejective affricate. Uh, so, um, you know, yeah, you have the mist. So to me, the misty dustiness maybe is more core than like clouds as rain bearers. It's more the uh, the fogginess of the clouds that maybe is more core to the meaning. Martin's hand and, popped and now, up really quickly a, a couple seconds ago, Bonnie. And I just want to know hand? if he has something to say about the quiver or about something related to it, Martin. Sure. But you can go on as soon as, yeah. Uh, yeah. I wanted to say what, what Bonnie said, uh, that for the Tlangasi, it's, uh, yeah, I, I also, uh, I, I don't know, but but I think this is separate from the arrow word. And I would think that the Sandawe Tlane went into Kwatsa for arrow. And the Tlangasi is also, there's a, I, I forgot the exact uh, shape of the cognate. There's a cognate in proto uh, or in Kalenjin. So um, I I tend to the same conclusion as uh, as Bonnie that these are probably two different words. And and then it's it's a real eye opener and a mystery to me that the that the bamboo is so similar because yeah it's true that they use the bamboo for the quiver. But then, um, and and then I would need to have a, 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 a source for the for the last syllable in the Tangasi, which yeah. Be yeah, is that a possible kushidicism? What would? Uh, what would that be? No, no, unless it is something like kati at the in Bantu the the middle or inside. I don't know. Um, but otherwise, if it's if it's not uh, if if we don't have a source for it, I would treat it as a separate word. Yeah. 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 But I'm 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 uh, happy with that because also I I like your your, your general analysis now that uh, that uh, lateral fricatives in in Davida are internal development from sprietization, and that the remnants of the laterals in Sagala are really due to uh, Cushitic influence. Um, and, and, and then yeah, what Bodhi said about how that is very interesting to then explain why did, do they make it a lateral uh, as the outcome of the spiritization, whereas the rest of Kenya doesn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but you had in your last uh, scheme, you had the tl for one of the Davida dialects as in one of the loans. And I, I hope that that is just the Tlangazi word. Yeah, sorry, the, the white one. Background uh, in further. Oh, okay. This yeah, this one. Here you have the first line and mm -hmm. then Davida W has R, L and then T. Uh, is that last one, is that in the Tlangazi word just? Yeah, the, the, the Davida, which one, the David Mbale or Ruga? Uh, Ruga. You have the it's last one. Uh, yeah. 
yeah 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 I, I think that's the only word but yeah it's just a corresponding one from um Pushitik. yeah so if we could take that one out then uh, then if that would not be the source for the davida one then then it would be but it would be reflex of the of the bantu word for bamboo then the whole picture would be uh, neater yeah yeah bonnie uh before before uh we 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 went to uh martin you had more to say do do go ahead yes so hadza has uh the, your milk word meaning breast um iliba so you talked about the first milk being liba in arabic that another word for that is the colostrum just uh fyi yeah uh so the Hadza call the colostrum, they just call it pus. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm curious about the milk thing. So when cattle milk, goat milk, sheep milk, whatever became a thing, I'm guessing, did the, the, the generic word for human milk transfer then to animal milk? And then people may have wanted to use a different word for human milk. Now, milk from a breast is not coming out of a cow's udder. <laughs> And the Hadza don't milk animals. So uh, I'm just trying to puzzle out how do we think? Um, I mean, I, and I do think that Iriba is the loan word in Hadza. Uh, how do we think? Like, why would they have borrowed the word for milk if they weren't borrowing milk? Or uh, it, help me out here. <laughs> you know, do you think it's possible that an original Cushitic word for milk then got applied, say, to cattle milk or, or sheep milk? I don't know what all be everyone in different in the Taita Hills drink. Um, and then therefore some other word for milk may have either a loan word or a word like for the colostrum may have needed to replace that more generic word if the generic word then ended up being used for animal milk. Does this at all sound plausible? Or yeah, what do you think might've happened? Yeah, that's uh, that's a semantic kind of change, kind of a whole research. Uh, it, it's uh, it's really difficult to tell unless you know the who used to her herd cattle and uh, use milk first. Then they have introduced the, the word. Then um, I I don't know about the Hadza if they they really have. Uh, they they use milk before the Kushitic people. I don't think so. It's, no, uh, no, and they still don't really know. But the the word means breast. It doesn't even mean milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I but mean, no, it means milk too, doesn't it? It's even a different gender. If I'm that's mistaken, true. I think uh, many of the cognates for for these words uh, from the other Bantu languages also, I think, means uh, breast. It's not only the, the this one um yeah that that's also something i i really don't know uh, what happened there and i cannot really uh, uh give you like an answer for that because okay all the possibilities are open but for this word exactly uh it seems like it is more of a diffusion from um from swahili and i think already there is a big discussion about it in um uh, in nurse and Hinebush. Uh, like in the proto sabaki and I think, yeah, Derek is here. He can tell us what he think about, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, the, um, yeah, the word for for milk there. Because also they mentioned that is uh, is coming from Kushitic into um, into Bantu. I uh, will take this moment to remind everybody that um, our Rift Valley Network webinars are uh, as always recorded and uh, they are archived uh, at Zenodo and uh, also put up on our YouTube page. Um, so uh, they can be re-listened to and they can sort of uh, form part of the conversation that uh, goes on. They'll also be added to the Rift uh, Valley bibliography. Um, uh, Unless we have any further questions, I'll leave it open for a moment or two. 
Um, our next uh, talk is going to be from Martin Mouse, but um, this was uh, this was fantastic. Unless there's any sort of further contribution, I think maybe it's worthwhile just to uh, just to say thank you uh, again to Ahmed for uh, a really yeah a really great uh, presentation. Great way to spend a, a Wednesday uh, afternoon. Thanks again, Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew, and thanks for the comments, Bonnie, Nina, Martin, and thanks. Uh, good to see you, Rahel, <laughs> and uh, Derek also. Yeah.